Yeah, yeah. I mean, what are what are some of the questions that that I can answer for you? Like, do you have any reservations about the program? Are you are you wanting to join and and just figuring out how to uh, make it happen most in the most practical way? Or tell me more where you stand and everything. sure. Yeah. 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 Um, I would. Uh, I, I I don't really have reservations. Um, the only thing that might be considered a reservation is just um, figuring out kind of what the cost would be given this kind of hybrid um, mm -hmm. setup. But, mm -hmm. but uh, from everything I've read and, and the interactions that, that you know we've had over email, mm -hmm. uh, it definitely feels like something that, that I have to do one way or the other, you know? Um, yeah. And so, uh, so, so I feel very kind of good and confident there. I do have uh, a number of, of kind of smaller questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so kind of just first off, kind of, uh, you know, you, you answered this a, a little bit um, in email, but, you know, what, what are your general thoughts in terms of kind of this kind of hybrid kind of apprenticeship where, you know, most of it for me would be um, online remote during, you know, two to three hours in the morning, plus the enterprise discussions in the evening, and then coming out for two and maybe a little more. I, as I talk to my wife, mm -hmm. kind of depending on our childcare stuff, it could be closer to three or more weeks, you know, um, which would be great. You know, the, she's very supportive. We both are very on board with this. It's just kind of, you know, she works, you know, during the day and, and, and our kids aren't in school. So we need to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the level of the only concern that I have is how much practical value you get out of the, the core part, which is building things, right? That's right. we can design things, and that's if you want to learn to design things, that's a powerful skill. Now you want to be also getting the hands-on skill. Now the two, two or three weeks or so will address some of that, uh, but I want to make sure that you get the value in terms of uh, what exactly your goals are for this. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, I don't have reservations about you know, like I'm, I'm willing to co collaborate and be open to different opportunities. For OSC's perspective, the bigger th biggest thing is is training people that can carry on the work you're doing. Uh, from what I'm understanding, re quite related work. Uh, it's not. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me just pick up. Sorry, we've got people working here right now. Sure. Yeah, just real quick. Hey, Josh, are you guys you guys done or? Yeah, we just got Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually on a, on a call right now, so <clears throat> I gotta, you know, is that, um, um, because the next steps, yeah, I can't, I can't do that right now, unfortunately. Um, is that, can you guys, um, is it okay to call it a day, or did you want to, want to go at it a little more, or? Yeah, actually, I gotta, I gotta stick around. So maybe let's, let's call it a day for now. Uh, okay. Since let me, let me just check. Hold on, let me check real quick with Katerina if, if she, she's uh, got anything. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, Katerina. Sorry about that. We've managing a couple of things as we're right now. We're building the the CD go home too, so we've got a couple of people right now, and we're pretty much in the middle of that. So it's quite quite a busy time. Um, but yeah, yeah. Regarding the uh, the practicalities of that, just just the only thing I want to make sure, like by collaborating in the program, you're definitely adding value, and even if it's just the design part where you don't build it, if you're working on a design, that's progress. Um, if you, go ahead. Yeah.
The, the sea calm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and then, you know, th that's also a test case for how we can teach remotely because we should be able to do hybrid. Like the, the intent of the two-week program was that you really get all, like if you can study besides that and you get these two weeks, you should be fully equipped. As long as you're committed to it and you say, yeah, I want to learn this. I mean, the build techniques, it's like, you got to learn how to measure, how to cut, how to screw things together. It's, it's like not that hard, right? If you can, if you can wrap your head, head around that conceptually, okay, now here's the whole build management process. That's something you can get remotely completely. You're an educated guy. I'm sure you can, you can do that. So that, that can definitely work. And I think you mentioned, so about the online courses, I mean, maybe one product to develop is the way to train and, and, um, skill people up remotely for people who can't do the physical on site the full time. So completely viable would be like say the two week crash course. Okay, a lot of people will have that time. And then we offer a full support package that we develop as something you can charge for because you're spending your time and you know, mixture of online materials and your time. So leveraging kind of the digital slash real economy in one. So I, I think there's definite product to be developed around that. So so right now we're doing the physical training. We don't have the, the complete remote training package. I mean, we're teaching people on site, but that's all being developed. That's That would be um, rich areas all for enterprise development. So it's all consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the whole goal of the program is we are co-creating enterprise. We're saying we're getting beyond this competition thing. We're creating an open network. Like, obviously, like, enterprises do that where they have closed consortia. That do oh man this dog's gonna keep it because Katarina left, uh, pardon, but um, the there's a, and I think you're you're connecting quite a bit to it. You're like help help me find the language because what we're trying to communicate is this this is a new paradigm, people, and we're starting it right now. You know we're doing it like what you're saying. Yes, you're you're developing that, but I teach me that we're developing that as one of the products that all of us are working on. And it's it's a core product. Like part of the whole, if you if you've seen my documents about the whole whole project, is part of it is remote training. It's on site. It's all kinds of variants of it. And the point is, we're developing this whole ecology of products that are intended to go towards this distributed market substitution thing. That we're so diverse, 
uh, so robust in our product base that this starts to spread and more more self-employed happy people are created around the world so what you're saying about yes you can develop this aspect absolutely that's part of the core product so it's not not in any way, way disaligned from what we're doing and, and perhaps that's an even advantage you're, you're you know you're you're testing out the path of the remote uh, the remote training which I mean that, that's not new we've, we've said yes remote training is part of it initially we th we we conceptualize here's the turnkey build for 50k pay us 50k will appear and you have a house period okay um, plus the materials and all of that and, um, all the other stuff uh, plus land and utility connections that's that's the person covers it but the other package was a ten thousand dollar support package where we drop ship the materials we walk through walk you through every step we give you the the on-site two-week crash course we give you build support and remote quality control and stuff like that to support you as a uh, talking about novices if you've never done this here's somebody to walk you hold your hand through every step of this process so at the end of it, you're like, oh yeah, this is great, and, and I did it, and I feel empowered, and I can even start showing other people how to do that. That's, that's, that was another product we were considering, uh, something around like the 10K price point of a full support package. Uh, so, and there's many things, many, many different um, kinds of things that can be the information products where the only constraint, as I mentioned in the email, is let's try to keep the, the barriers to information sharing non-existent, i.e. keep everything open, charge in a different place, because it's really important that we bring the level of society up um, as one of the critical issues in society today with the big political divides, the, the big culture wars and all that. It's, uh, I mean, <laughs> from one perspective, you can say that the culture wars are, it's like, you get a job, you're a maker of some sort, some tradesperson, but unfortunately the way society is set up, that's somewhat of a dead-end job because why not develop your more skills to now start designing that stuff? So you can either be a builder of other people's stuff or you can evolve, keep evolving and growing and say, okay, now I'm actually designing the things. It's just such a much more rich, empowering, self-determined life. Um, and that's, that's completely the vision. So we're kind of sharing that and and I'm glad. So, as a research psychologist, that's is that is that kind of like the the field you're in. I mean, there is the whole and and you're Cheng Chik Shent Mihai's student. That's amazing. That's that's like we're rolling with the best here, and and we're now trying to integrate that. Okay, let's talk about uh, how we create peak experience in in how we go about our life and creation of our livelihoods. I mean, that's that's just amazing. So. It's all part of the package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I must, yeah, yeah, I, I must say it's, it's just amazing. Like out of the woodwork, we have people like you, now you got the psychology side. That's exactly what I'm imagining. It's like we bring these crazy diverse skills into the same package because the same package requires all of that. And that's how we make the best product in the world by considering all the sides that go into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the crash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. September 1 through the 14th yeah September 1 through the 14th that's that's on the calendar absolutely no question about that no no that's that set so that's the first day the first two weeks of the summer of extreme design build are the builder crash course uh, that month is designed to be kind of um, like I, I would say maybe most interesting there's the CD go home there's the aquaponic greenhouse there's a printer build and then the tractor build. So like four very diverse, powerful things that you can do it all in that same month. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, we would do it. I think we said it either. I think it's 8, 8 a.m. Um,
Yeah. That would be the ideal because part of the work that we do is collaborative design. So that means how do we actually handle multiple people working on the same files or parts of the same files and all that. So there's a skill set regarding large scale collaboration that goes into that. And we'd want to have people contemporaneously doing that. So everyone in the program should do it at the same time because then we can show how we divide tasks and make them lighter uh, by doing it from many sides with many people uh, paralleling on it. So that would be important as part of the collaborative literacy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We wanna. I mean, what I'm hearing is that yeah, you you see the purpose, uh, but but tell me more, uh, and I'll come back to this question regarding the regularity of the schedule. Um, so the build skills. Are you interested in actually being the the manager? Like for example, building houses. You are you building one for yourself? That that'll be for you. Uh, are you are you seeing yourself also manage crews? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm driving at the, at the thing of one, like what's the most important thing that would be most satisfying that would also, for you, that also contributes to the whole project. And I, I hear your collaborative nature on it. Yes, I mean, if someone else wants to do that, of course. Like I'm gonna be doing this because nobody else is doing it yet. I, I wanna innovate as soon as I get more people to do what I'm trying to do, right? That, that model. So definitely learning like ma organizational psychology and management, right? Entrepreneurship, like movement entrepreneurship. How do we become powerful to make change and work as a team to do it? We don't have to do it alone, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, as far as the, just your interest in um, the hands-on build, like building a tractor, building a 3D printer or whatever, like, I mean, how, how interested are you in that? What, where does that fit in your mission of organizational psychology interest and peak performance? <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as far as the nonprofit, tell me a little bit more of what, what you've done so far, like where you're at with it. Is this space you're renting or buying? Mm -hmm. But you already have a, a lot for the, the CD go home or? The, you're in an eco village right now. What, what's sorry? What's it called? White Hawk Eco Village. Okay.
Okay. Do you have the, uh, strict building codes there in a White Hawk Eco Village, or what kind of codes do? Uh huh. Those kind of standard it, it, things are, are in place. Are you froze? Huh. Are you there? Oh, uh, I hear. I don't see that. I'm hearing stuff. See that you're here, but I don't see her. Regarding the CD Go Home too as a potential revenue model, um, I mean, what's your thought on that? Because I just want to explain the logic here. Like, I think with the home, because it's such a good product, everyone wants a home. We actually shifted to it after COVID hit. We're like, we're doing some of the steam camps and doing work with 3D printing and smaller stuff but we said well how do we make real impact like things that matter because we're still solving for people showing up like open source hardware has not solved for people showing up it's typically this solo warriors and uh, strong leadership team and then people come and go because of the financial feedback loops they're not there and we're saying okay now I think we've got it we've got it in the bag because okay here's a product that's solid I don't think someone will refuse uh, it's an irresistible offer to offer a house for that could cost you uh, you know 50k on top of the materials or say 100k plus some of the other costs i mean you just can't get it right. i just found right. from another person in a local local area a built contractor is charging 270,000 for a thousand square foot home things like that so we probably have a 2x advantage um over anything else uh, the cheapest i've heard of people doing it is is like 130k 
there's a guy called the Migraine Craftsman. I saw him on YouTube, and he talks like us. He's talking about affordable housing, as in he could charge more, but he chooses to be ethical. And actually, I think that's that's a deliberate decision here. It's like we could because we went through this. We can say, oh, we're actually going to charge 200k for it instead of 100k because we can. But sure. are we filtering it through our mission? Are we solving housing by doing that? So, uh, but short story being, we think we've got a revenue model that works and, and that's the exciting part so we can scale, scale the operations, basically use that to be able to fund it and then we can continue the R&D and keep absorbing more people into the project. That's the general framework. How does that sound to you? Exactly. I mean, I'd say this is the, the model that we had in mind. Mm -hmm. Fire, and we were just thinking, okay, we're going to have this home building thing. We just need to figure out how to build a home. <laughs> like, so we lack the method, but 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 also I think one of the beauties that, that I see with this, um, with the unschooling kind of community thing mm -hmm. is, is, is really kind of the function stacking that goes into like being able to, to build a home with, you know, in a community, you know, have a community of people, you know, some of whom... Might, this might not be their thing, but they mm -hmm. but they can you know, lend a hand when it comes to you know particular p parts in the build, right? Yeah. But then having kids of different ages, yeah. when they're interested, being able to have real, yeah. make real contributions and learn real skills, Absolutely. and it's so it, it's benefiting them, it's benefiting the build. It's just it, it just all makes so much sense. And then, you know, we really want most most unschooling type centers you know rely on tuition to to fund them mm -hmm. and. We really want to have kind of you know regenerative businesses that can support us, so that we don't need to rely on tuition. So we can drop that to further increase accessibility. And so you know this would be a, just a great way to have this community kind of like coming together process where we're building together. You know, hopefully you know some of those people you know are also getting you know you know fairly compensated for their time as well. Those who are taking leads in that build process, but then also the the nonprofit is is getting some of that revenue so that we can. You know, you know, decrease uh, you know uh, the tuition charges and stuff like that, and so, yeah. so it's very, it's exactly what what we what yeah. we want to do. And we've done some, you know, like we've got some financial models that we'll keep developing because right now it's just a guess. We've got okay, X hours, X like, but we're starting to reify those numbers, which case yeah. we're probably like ahead of where you are. Uh, because we've seen the build costs and the times and we explore the ergonomics of the build very carefully because that's after all what's going to make or break the enterprise it's, it's about efficiency like the first thing when we came out here was like yeah um, learn that you know the hippies failed, failed for a reason you need efficient production as part of the <laughs> the package to right. to do a modern standard of living because very few people are going to be willing to cave up in a hole and, and live the minimalist lifestyle. Uh, that, that requires spiritual enlightenment. Uh, but we cannot rely on that to, to uh, change society, and therefore the effective productivity is important. But I mean, a lot of people don't get that idea. They're like, oh, yeah, we're just keep messing around. And, um, but we're saying, okay, let's focus our energies. Up. Make sure we've got the economic base solved so we can move on. Uh, and it's not that hard, and with the collaborative economics, I think it's a breakthrough breakthrough model. It's just no one is, just nobody's practicing it, and that's, yeah. that's where the value of transformation comes in from that. Yeah. 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 And and yeah, no, I totally see that. And and tell me, um, out of curiosity, just from like an affordability yeah. perspective, uh, I know the CD Go Home one was twenty five. Yeah. You know, and, and stuff. Is, is that still an option? Like, is there a cheaper, like, smaller model, or or, or is well, that not? The 25k is is effectively what what happened when the materials were like half the cost. Now, uh, okay. if you want to go to lower than 50, you do a smaller build. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so that's so a thousand is for thousand square feet is 50k. If you want right. to go start smaller, you'll save accordingly. The, the largest cost is in the utilities and like the kitchen bathroom plus utilities. Um, and then adding on to that, it's less expensive. But you can do something, I would say, we actually haven't considered that because that's like a smaller home that would not be a mainstreamable case. We're focusing right. on a more like, okay, 1,000 square feet is something that 
uh, definitely could be mainstream. Like it could be a great start at home for just about anybody. Um, whereas for the smaller, we know from experience that you know we've been there. We started with a 144 square foot micro house, and that doesn't work if you have a wife. <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, I can cave up in, a, in my mud hut, and I did that for like eight years or so. But once you get a family or you know a partner, that doesn't really work that well. Um, but I think for 25k, you can probably do half to one third or even a quarter. Like um, we just haven't gone through the details of the economics of that. But um, uh, I could probably guess that. I mean, a quarter size, like two, the, the house is built of 256 square foot modules. That's the minimum you can build. If you think you can start with that, then what's the 256 square feet, 16 by 16. I mean, how much area do you have in your camper right now? Um, we're um, it's eight feet. Well, it's more like 12 feet by 39 or 40. So okay. 12, 40, yes. It's like... It's like 450 square feet, maybe. Yeah, maybe. so it'd be like yeah. two modules of, the, of what we have. Um, I would guess the rough guess would be like 30K and probably 25K for, for 256 square feet. Because uh, the, the first core module, if, if you're including all the utilities in there, that's the most expensive part. But then if you add on, it's like 5,000 for any, any other uh, module that you're adding, something to that effect. And that's now considering off the the shelf materials which are very high right now right. and part of it is developing the things like the construction grade 3d printers so printing large 3d printed objects as well as sawmill and brick press so that we're all developing in tandem yeah so that the brick press fascinates me and, yeah. and so 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 is the idea that eventually that would replace much of much of the lumber and thus yeah. bring prices down well replace it's a, it's another option because what you'll find is uh, it takes much more energy to build a brick home it's like each wall section of four by eight feet is like four thousand pounds it's it's heavy work um, mm -hmm. but we're aiming to offer that in 2022 as a turnkey option at pretty much the same or similar price point it does require some more equipment like right now we've, we've got the the brick press but it's all about materials handling it's all about that. So the next thing we actually still need to do the the soil mixer, which mixes cement and water in the soil. So you got the mix um, for stabilized block. If you don't do stabilized block, you can you can go off with the brick press like we are right now. But unstabilized block means if you rain, uh, you're gonna melt your block unless you protect it from the rain. So, um, but yeah, that's the that's the next thing. Uh, so it'll be it's always and. Uh, people can definitely definitely the CEB would be relevant and like the only option if you don't have trees around But if you're living in northern Canada, you might afford wood because it's 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 sustainable there So mm -hmm. whatever is most appropriate, but I'd like to shift way more to the the CEB simply because it's a superior building technique uh, It's just you know earthquake bullet tornado proof and all of that. I mean uh, Solid mass so yeah, it's just higher quality and when you say it's a comparable price, that's because of the extra labor you're saying that goes into moving yeah, it? Yeah, the that material is cheaper, but mm -hmm. the labor is going to be higher. Simply that's because correct. instead of 150 pounds per module, you've got a weight of about 4,000 pounds per module. When I say module, I mean 4 by 8 feet for the individual modules that go into the house. So the bricks mm -hmm. are, that's solid mass. That's gotcha. not, light, not light work. And it's uh, right now, it's pretty much legacy housing in the United States because the labor costs are, are high there. Now, with our swir swarm build techniques, we do introduce new options because we can get the collaborative build process happening. And we can reverse the financial equation there, actually charging people for that experience instead of us paying for labor. That You can frame that around an immersive build experience where the byproduct is you actually build a house and you've got a lot of labor to to do that. So if you can frame a very interesting education program around the build, that's what we've yeah. been doing. That's that's the way we built this house in five days with 50 people and provide a decent education experience. And, and then you can really start thinking about, that's why we need the collaborative design, the open source, because you can just soup that up to like augmented reality training, automation. Like for example, 
just 3D printing the panels with waste plastic. That's going to be a game changer in terms yeah. of cost. Because right now I'm devising the, you know, the full detailed build procedures. We're working on that right now. And it's like, oh, all you need is a digital file and throw it in a 3D printer. Don't worry about the build procedure. The computer's got it covered. So wow. you, know, you can continuously, like, um, I was just doing, like, a, we call this stuff extreme manufacturing. But one of the principles is uh, the you can optimize forever until it's zero labor. I mean, that's the bottom line. With modern technology, you can continue optimizing until you get to zero labor. And that's a, fa that's a, that's a reality we, we live with in, in terms of current technology. So um, that's where we're going to. And, and make it not, not that we, uh, not for some purpose of, yeah, like, we're going to make billions with that. It's for, no, that translates to billions of people liberated. Because yeah. now yeah. the cost, uh, cost goes down. And now people can have a chance to actually start evolving to freedom as, as their choice. Not They don't have to make a living. Uh, that's not the central preoccupation of civilization as it is now. Uh, and yeah. Which is not improving. That's, that's the thing we want to address. We want to yeah, the, the lot for everybody, and this is the happy use of the good AI versus evil AI here. Uh, this is where we're actually, technology for common good, which a lot of people think about, oh, that's going to take jobs or this or that. No, it's, it's collaborate with it. Include, include technology. We're, we're about collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of ab abundance. We include everybody. We include robots. We include AI. Uh, we're not exclusive. And, and I think philosophically speaking, uh, the, the kind of mindset, the positive psychology mindset that we need is that, hey, there is no us or them. We're all in it together. And, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of crew we're trying to set up with, within the OSE immersion mentor, uh, the apprenticeship, also the mentorship part, but apprenticeship, yeah, I mean, we're building a crew like that. And we have to live it and, and show the example so that this thing just takes over. Uh, yeah. that's, that's the goal. Yeah, love it, love it. Have you, uh, the, the bricks themselves wouldn't, have good insulation value, right? Yeah, good thermal mass, but not insulation. So you still have to do insulation, like um, whatever you would do for insulation. One one thing we have done is you got two layers of br brick, and then you throw in cellulose insulation in between that. That's one way to do it, or the the foam board on the outside. Different ways to do it. What about? Have you considered? Are you familiar with light cost light straw clay? Yeah, you can do like. You can do you can lighten up the blocks with fluffy material to get more in insulation because, value. Because there's you know you have straw bale and then you have cob and the and straw there's light straw clay which yeah. kind of like which mixes straw in there and yeah. and with that you can get really high insulation value yeah. and I wonder if, if and and they actually um, in that building technique that sometimes they will build bricks that they can then use later. So the idea of having a they could do that. They can kind of automate that process, and then you have this brick that yeah. also has a high insulation value. That Different technology. That wouldn't be a compressed route, but I'm sure there's some innovation uh -huh. to be done there. Uh, like, for example, geopolymers or like aerated ways to do it, or, or some light particles within the mix, or even just a way to do like um, if it's sawdust or some fluffy material, like even recycled polystyrene. Uh, that you're throwing in the mix, but then you have to bind it. It's not going to just bind just like the, the earth blocks. But what I can tell you right now is that that's all innovation to waiting to be happened. And, and I don't see much. Uh, I, I typically say that we're in a stone age of innovation right now. So if we need to develop something better, we, we can. Like one thing is to me that's like a low hanging fruit is just local concrete. Limestone is everywhere, right? You burn it, you make lime, you can make lime concrete. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of options of what you can do. And. Um, as we start designing molecules or like whatever graphene or like other high-tech insulating materials um, it, it's that's all to be done and also taken to the realm of post-scarcity it's we're not there yet we're still kind of in a scarce resources mode uh, altogether the, the bricks i mean that does work an unstabilized simple block to build a house um yeah that, that works that certainly works yeah, yeah cool interesting that, that makes sense yeah uh, I'm looking at the time. I have time, but uh, I have a yeah. few more. I want some questions I want to get to before. So tell yeah. me how much more time you have. Yeah, yeah. Let's try to quit around around three or so, and then maybe we can uh, maybe a few minutes. But um, 
uh, after. So let me but, yeah, let's cover yeah. some more stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll kind of try to go quickly. Um, one thing, my my wife, who's you know doing the nonprofit with me, is really interested in the stuff and, mm -hmm. and a little envious of the idea of me doing it all. And, um, and her time is a little bit less f flexible because. You know, when she's home, the kids tend to be kind of more attached to her, and, and if she's not home, she's working. But, but she would love to, like, try to participate in, like, the design work and, yeah. and kind of me on this stuff. Would it be okay if she, like, you know, could could she be kind of trying to, to do it along with us? And yeah. if she doesn't, you know, that's fine. But, like, are you cool with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and um we want people doing this, so so let's make yeah. it work out. Like like I asked you, like okay, what would be the ideal situation? Let's yeah. you know let's define that, and then let's say in a post scarcity mindset, let's say okay, how do we make it happen? It's, once yeah. again, like I, I like to refer to negotiation. Negotiation is never split the difference. Both parties need to get what they want, and and we we work it out and make it happen. And the way we operate here is we help each other to do that, and any and, and that's in the interest of both both people. Because, right, right. Um, like, true negotiation is really about collaboration. Like, you have to consider what the other person wants, and what, and you're agreeing to say, okay, we're going to collaborate, we work together on making that happen. Because the better, the better the deal the one person gets, the better the deal the other, other person gets. And, and the way I like to say it is that um, it's about uncovering. Just we need to uncover what is that that, like, because because there's an iceberg of like, okay, here's a little tip of what we're communicating, but what else is all there that's hidden? <laughs> underneath there that we don't see and, and if we expose that make it more transparent then, then we work something out that definitely works but yeah I'm definitely willing to work with you on however whatever we'd like to work out there mm -hmm. cool very good very good and yeah. I might be able to find some other people in the area who are yeah. interested yeah, probably, absolutely. Yeah, probably more like in, in the remote piece mm -hmm. um, you know, is there somewhere I, I think that there will be I think I think the like for us, for example, the money would like we could, you know, it would be challenging for us to do the one of us, and I'm hoping that she could just kind of like come in and out as needed. And I, um, but like with the, like, is there some like uh, way to make it more financially accessible to people who might not be able to pay, but kind of like do like a group thing with us, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's let's make it happen. Like, uh, okay. I mean, if you're of course, we have to cover costs and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, sure. let's you know, let's let's do that. If you know, let's talk about some numbers. Like, think about what what's the value, and and let's just uh, make it happen. Yeah. Like, what, cool. what would be a number that works for both of, both of us? And I mean, right. of course, my interest is like the more people are actually engaged in it, the better. Now, the thing is, it's like um, uh, the, the statement like if you pay, you're paying attention kind of deal. Like, we want to make sure that yeah. whoever is yeah. coming into it they're committing to it as well so they have yeah. some stake stake in it that's that's the only concern for when you get a whole bunch of people like around it and you don't want to just spend the time and people just kind of drift in and out you want to make sure that there's a level of commitment that we we can address in the way we set it up yeah 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 no, i totally get that yeah, yeah. and and yeah. i'll have to you know gauge interest there might not be yeah. other interest from it um uh, uh, real quick yeah. maybe the, the last question and, and of course perhaps the biggest Que uh, a big question. Um, so, uh, well, and, and maybe you kind of touch on this already, but um, you know, I, I do see you know OSC's work is, is fundamentally anti-oppressive insofar as it kind of decentralizes knowledge opportunities. But that said, you know, we have this systemic oppression in our society that that you know keeps you know certain groups from accessing some of these resources yeah. and opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I'm just wondering what, if anything. You do, because uh, my, my fear is that it's just going to be a bunch of privileged folk who, who are the early adopters because they they have the ability to uh, adopt early. So I'm wondering, you know, if you've given any thought or if you, you know, do anything to, to give access to those who, who may not have those yeah. opportunities. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. In the price structure of the event itself here, there's a near free option too for people who cannot afford it and who can work it off like, effectively as a loan. But what you're saying is is a real, it's a real, real issue, and I think that the people who are gonna break through the oppression is like right now. I think the elites more or less fund the initial development, 
as we get more established, we have extra resources and we create programs with an explicit mission of saying, okay, we're going to make this accessible. So we are doing it. Like, for example, um, I'm wor we're, we are working on and fund like funding, but that means someone else is paying, right? Um, there's resources that go into this and materials and so forth. So, so we're working on getting a couple of local people, at least from Kansas City and actually even Maysville, um, into the program. But we need funding somehow. So that's the way we can do it. So someone has to pay. Now, as we get economic power and this model is working, uh, we should have resources to, to do things like paid internships and things like that that make it okay. Now there's absolutely no barrier because right now we could even do like, like free, you know, a free option may not even work because a person is losing time. That they're not making a living. Uh, they're losing money right now for what they could be doing working. So that's that's definitely to address. But I, I'm seeing that um, we're very conscious about it, and um, I think it's about deliberate cre creation of programs that make that feasible and economically feasible. Um, yeah. yeah. Does that does that answer it or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And and, and I think also, you know, to, to what you were saying earlier too, like, you know, if, if uh, you know, some people that in this area are interested in, you know, participating remotely, I imagine that, you know, you with the remote access, there'd probably also be much more flexibility in, in pricing structure, for example. And if I were doing some of the in-person builds, you know, then and could share that knowledge out, then that, that, that could also yeah. kind of I mean, I mean, one way it does work is like think of yourself as the messenger. Like you get taught a lot of it, and you can. I mean, absolutely, it's all open source. I mean, all yep. this stuff is for free. What you're paying for is the fast track. It's the deep immersion that spending time right. with people and with the access to the resources that makes you learn faster. Uh, but right now, it's like I mean, there is a sector, the nonprofit sector. But we're, I mean, we're a nonprofit, but we don't operate like a nonprofit. We, we don't do grants. We don't. We never really did that we're we're bootstrap funded so uh simply because nobody's going to fund the revolution that's that's the thing in order to scale to the level we need we cannot rely on funding from foundations because it's not going to happen um right. so part of it is developing a revenue model that that works from the bootstrap thing and it's clear it's called efficient production so if the house works like we think it, the, in the model it does there's plenty of revenue, and then to, to grow the project significantly. And I'd like to double every year from now on. So, so that's that's kind of the, the background goal. Doubling, I don't think we should have a problem doubling uh, every year. Um, and in an immediate sense, like if, if we do want people to take the programs, it's like let's let's write grants to, uh, like for example, the collaborator in Kansas City. He's, for example, interested. He's interested in the program, but he's also a grant writer too. So he might be like, okay, let's get more people, more funding into this because. The different thing, different thing, as I said, it's it's we are bootstrap funded because we believe the growth of the project that needs to happen uh, will not be otherwise funded. Right. Right. Cool. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, looking at time, can I ask one last question? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Because um, uh, as I'm thinking through uh, the the space that we'd want to uh, use, yeah. uh, I'm wondering, you know, with within mind that I'd like to at the very least be doing home builds, if not also mm -hmm. just be able to start building other things. How much space? You know, would sh do, should I be thinking that I, that I need for this? Well, um, I mean, the house footprint is 500 square feet, so the lot has to be like you know a thousand square feet, absolute minimum. Like that's like house next to the house. But mm -hmm. I mean, we think of um, like if you talk about an OSC campus, we say like 40 acres. But a small operation is you know you can do this at any scale, like depending what you do. It could be a a hacker space micro factory. That's a lot. Right. If you want to get into land-based operations, you're actually feeding people. That's at least an acre, you know, things like that. Um, we envision that as far as the the replica facilities, we're thinking on a scale of 100 acres for like the full, like we have 30 acres here. That's enough for a core facility to do a lot of different things. When we replicate, I'd like to see like, um, nominally I'm thinking like about 1,000 acre lots because then you get to the $1,000 per acre price point which means you can get a lot of that at a much lower cost. Uh, and if we're actually recreating civilization <laughs> as, as we speak of, we need to operate at that scale. But for now, it's uh, for you, I'd say, uh, for a basic operation, it's like like a couple of acres that you can get started with. Uh, if you're built, but if you're just building houses for people, that's just a lot, you know? So, so I would, 
so let's say you know uh, this place you know has a, has a barn for example. Yeah. We could you know set up some equipment there just as kind of like a maker space for people yeah. to kind of explore with, and then the builds would happen at, at the lots wherever those are. Yeah. So we would kind of to, as a start. The number to is four thousand square feet for your basic workshop. That's what we have here, and that's plenty of space for a lot of the activity that we do. We've done all the workshops pretty much out of that. Now we're we're building another four thousand square foot for this summer, um, and more space like outdoor kitchen and bathrooms to handle like 100 or 200 people on site at one time um, but the thing about if you talk about um, a facility for the micro factory 4,000 square feet is the nominal number right now okay okay mm -hmm. and and if it's smaller it would just mean it just there'll be less equipment you, that we can have machines. you can do 3d printers you know 3d printers right. you know that's that's right. the classroom okay. yeah okay just once so you start welding torching you need a little space on the concrete floor stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, uh, what are some, any other major questions? I mean, anything else? Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, th this all sounds wonderful. I, I feel like there's a lot yeah. that, that is just such a great fit and, you know, as I, and I feel like there's a lot that I can contribute to. I, I know yeah. there's anything I can learn. Um, you, it, you really did rock my world with the uh, idea of you know my online uh, productivity and leadership course going on uh, open source and 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 I, I want to do it. Uh, I'd love to get a little bit of guidance yeah. about how to make that happen efficiently because you know just some of the basics just in terms of like what is that like you know what open source designation you know is it the Creative Commons like what yeah. how do I yeah, you know there's certain licenses that you have to publish under. And yeah. it's really about, uh, it starts with a philosophy. Like, you have to believe, yeah. you have to understand what a value proposition is. And that's kind of like the stuff that we would talk about during the enterprise sessions in the evenings would be, what is, do you understand what value you have? If you right. can define it, then you can say, where in the value chain am I charging for it? And I'm convinced that by opening up the know-how and charging elsewhere is the way to go. Like, like the certification part is, is for real. Because that's a well-known model, in fact. Like on uh, whatever, Udemy or whatever, the online courses, you, you can take them for free. But if you, if you want a certification, then you have to pay for it. And what does that mean? That means you're probably, you might be spending some time on that unless that's fully automated. There's some more hand-holding and, and there's an actual higher level of responsibility that the person has to take on because they're actually being graded. Mm -hmm. You can also set it up such that what they're working for contributes value in itself. Like, for example, to design this new, new thing for the tractor. Well, they got the certification. They also added value to us. So you have to really study the value chains where they are and that will determine where you're charging and how much. Right. And make right. it, and the first principle being open access. Um, right. Because there's right. other ways to, to generate revenue. Simply by value added, it's like the, the open core um, where we add value in a different place. Now the difference between normal businesses and that is that a normal proprietary business does not share how they add that value and what their revenue model is. We do. Because that in itself is value. Because the other thing you, you'll notice is that you can be getting more into a, also a franchise model, which means that, okay, now you're teaching this. How about you're teaching the teachers that make this spread farther? You know, sure, that's sure. a bigger value proposition. And then there's, you can create revenue models around that. So, but it's all something you have to, it's something to really consider. And, and starting with a mindset, that's a shift of mindset. That's the first thing. That's kind of like the first thing we're, we're, we're trying to teach people. It's like, okay, first of all, we're collaborating. And just take that. So say you're collaborating and you, you know that you're going to have access to, okay, say I'm running some business and, you know, we've been in business for some time now. It's you know, marginally, but it's like we're, we're not going away. And we're, we're continuously developing. So the, the first thing to recognize is, okay, now you've got a crew of a dozen people that are working it's like they're working for you. They're working with you. They're working for you. We're all feeding the revenue models to each other and developing them. So you can get the confidence that, okay, if I learn what Martian is doing or this or that, like say the 3D printer business model or the house, okay, I'm good. Uh, I actually can make the revenue meet, meet the ends. 
and then we can treat the, the information products a little differently, maybe because you're not even depending on them. But we still do have a robust model for, okay, this is education, this is immersion training, various other opportunities. So we have to think about where that those opportunities lie and, and just turn them into real uh, revenue models. Yeah, yeah, I, lo I love it, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and is there an obvious way with like the, because I have the online course and then I have the collaboration, like, piece uh, is that just like the stage is like kind of like a wiki where people can be contributing ideas because yeah. I, I feel like you know i have certain expertise so i don't necessarily want everyone just being like no no you should be doing this you know but i also want to have a space for people to kind of you know brainstorm and, and, and offer yeah. so and how do i yeah you do want to set up space and that's a careful art of how do you <clears throat> become 100 percent vulnerable and uh, also respected authority in, in another way. Authority is an earned authority, not just like authority by right. name, but right. you've got certain expertise. Um, uh, you have merit in it, and that's that's something to work out, like where is your open collaboration platform? How does it work? And that gets into governance, right? And I think we touched on that, right? Um, actually, I'm not, that was actually, talk, we were talking about with another person but um, it's really the what is that the governance behind it like how do you allow how do you make the rules that people can collaborate openly but also not abuse it so you have to empower you have to structure it and empower structure it first to make that the case and create governance structure around it that promotes it um, which is a creative process Mm -hmm. So that's these kinds of things are to be developed. That's an art to it, uh, but right. it does re rely like the first step is, is it's a personal, it's an inner journey that says, okay, I'm going to be vulnerable. That's a skill already. Now, right. if you the more vulnerable you are, if you can master the self-esteem part of vulnerability, then you can handle all those situations where people are piping up and trying to seize authority. Because there's a lot of immature people. You're going to get that. You're going to open yourself up. You're going to open up to. All kinds of stuff but this is where you learn more how to manage how to become anti-fragile and how to turn those things into opportunities not threats so this right, is right, a, right. the magical part of converting situations uh, so I, I'd say that that's anti-fragility that is um, it's called this is a psychology term for it. what is that what? I, I call uh, it sublimation Oh, interesting. And I, okay. call, and I have a term called economic sublimation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Look it up on the wiki. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, but th this is where it gets to now. The journey come, becomes internal. This is like, okay, you up your skill set, and then the new challenges that come with openness and transparency and open source collaborative development, you step up to them. You have to learn new skills. And this is why we're building our, our crew <laughs> of, of people to make that a reality. And yeah. I think I can provide good leadership on it because this is why I live this. And, and, and man, yeah. um, I get good guidance. So I have a good, really good mentor. Uh, he really challenged me on this like last year, actually, interestingly. Like, he basically challenged me, so why aren't you collaborating? And, what? Uh, mm. And then we went into that and we explored mm. what true collaboration really means. So I... I've got mm, mm. good insight on that. And that's kind of thing that I'm trying to communicate to other people right now is we think we collaborate, but what are the ways that we do collaborate and what are our limits? Uh, mm. And I think the, the faulty mental model is that most people think they're like playing good open collaborators. No, no, we're not. If, if we were, we wouldn't have patents. We wouldn't have corporate structure the way it is right now. The world would be much different. So, so we have to first observe what happens right now, and work on transcending it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And well, yeah. it's exciting. It's the most exciting game. It's like that's why we gotta get the tech let's get the technology out of the way. Yeah, I am yeah, yeah. working on technology. I am because nobody's doing it. We gotta solve it. Yeah. All right. And All right. after that's right. solved, we move on to other things. So yeah, yeah, that's a general thing. And and speaking of the collaboration, you you, uh, you you know you sent that link about the social contract, which is which is great. And you asked yeah. if I could add to it. So yeah. So what what do you mean by that? I, I'd be happy to, to add. I have a bunch of ideas. Um, edit and edit it. Right. Uh, it's that 
so that that page is open if it's if okay. it's uh, if it becomes a founding document we can say no edits close it up right now it's in development it's meant for that page was meant for the participants in, a, in an OSC apprenticeship to contribute to I seeded it I think there's some solid stuff there mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what did I miss what's important yeah, to you yeah. right nice. and yeah. we ask the question to everybody and then we make that document better I'm not yeah. attached to it I'm yeah. attached to the best outcome yeah yeah that's all I want I like it. Cool. So, uh, cool. do you have feedback, which I'm sure you do. Then, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I thought, yeah. Okay, so, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, get it on the wiki and uh, start it. Okay, cool. Wonderful. This is it's so nice to connect with you, and yeah. uh, this yeah, is really exciting. Really exciting. Yeah. yeah, so let's, you know, think about it, sleep on this, think about the value proposition and all that, and let's yeah. make it work out. And so, so, so yeah, what would, the, what would the next step be? Just discussing, let's, like, let's financial see. logistics and... Financial logistics, so let's settle on that. And okay. after that, we I'll send you an agreement to, to, that says, okay, this is what we agreed to, and this is the expectations and so forth, such as the social contract and the fact that we're co-developing and all of that. And yeah. um, uh, we'll send you the, the agreement, and then you make the payment, and you're officially in into the program. And love to have you. I mean, you, I, I think you bring some tremendous skill sets as a research psychologist who studied with, with the, the master of flow <laughs> named Chick Shank Mihai. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So yeah, he's yeah. still alive, right? He's how, yes, how yes. He? Yeah, he's like 85. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 a, he's a brilliant guy. He's truly... Yeah. No, I mean, he's a seminal yeah. figure. That's, that's like yeah. he really one of is. the seminal figures of the world that's still alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You study yeah. with him. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm planning soon on sending him an email and mentioning some of this stuff. I'm sure I, 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 I can see him getting behind uh, a lot of these. Yeah. First I thing I want to say is that if, if there's um, if the stuff he teaches is for real, probably a lot of his other students may be highly interested in this kind of stuff too. So maybe like, yeah. if you can uh, rope any of those, just pass this on to yeah to other <laughs> Chikshan <laughs> disciples because they're gonna yeah. probably love this. So, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, oh, I, I, awesome. I, I, I will, I will definitely. Well, cool. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch. Uh, and um, yeah. is there a certain time? No, by I think by the end of the month is like the early bird thing. Yeah, you need to go by a certain time. Is is that kind of a yeah. good target? Yeah, I mean, let's try to settle whatever. Yeah. I'll, I'll try. Yeah, we'll just, just when yeah. you're ready, when you're ready. But uh, but yeah, let's let's do that so that we can actually start onboarding you and like moving forward. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it will be in the next day or two. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Okay. Well, wonderful. well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and we'll we'll get touch soon. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.